Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, welcome everyone. My name is Lamari and I am the Senior Director of Community Engagement for the Decentralized Identity Foundation. I've been at DIFF for close to two years and I came to DIFF, uh, actually have an interesting story. I came from years of doing political activism and work. I was actually deeply moved by the revelations of Edward Snowden. And when I started to learn about decentralized identity, it really clicked for me as something that's really essential for all of us, uh, you know, the future of pretty much, I mean, industries, also our uh, ability to feel safe with our identities. And that really drew me to doing the work with DIFF. So today we are, oh, this is the opening session of DIFF's very first hackathon. If you're familiar with DIFF, you will know that we primarily incubate specifications. We have not had a developer community in the past, but you may have heard that there was a recent donation of the code of Veramo, which is a JavaScript framework to DIFF. So we will have more developers around us this point forward. Um, and also, we are, have a great interest in global adoption. And one of the great ways to promote global adoption of decentralized identity is through hackathons. This means lots of use cases being put out there, some of which might be become startups. I can just give you an example of one member of the DIFF community, which is Transmute. They started their journey from a hackathon and now they are providing decentralized um, access for global shipping and supply chain and being able to track what exists within the global supply chain. So it's very exciting and I look forward to seeing what comes out of, of the, the event of, of that, that will unfold over the next few weeks. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the next slide. Uh, just to give you an overview of what we will be going through today. So um, we will be going through uh, we will invite our hackathon sponsors to do a quick intro and invite you to the sessions that they have coming up over the next couple of weeks. Also, we will hear a, a brief intro to the Decentralized Identity Foundation by Andor Kesselman, um, who he's right there. Um, he is the the uh, chair of the Technical Steering Committee, also the CTO and co-founder of Fenri. And then we'll have an overview of the hackathon rules. I want to emphasize that I will not be going through the entirety of the rules. That would take a, a very long time. I will emphasize parts of the rules that I think are very important to highlight because they may easily disqualify you from the prize pool that you decide to submit to. So I will be highlighting that. Uh, however, it is the responsibility of every single participant to go through the rules in its entirety to make sure that those are understood, to make sure everything that you release to when you submit to this hackathon. Okay, so with that, um, oh, and one last thing, uh, I'll put this up front as well, very important dates that you may want to keep track of, all of what I will be going through today, it's in the rules section of the hackathon. So if you go to the hackathon site, and I'll go ahead and drop that into the chat as well. Um, let me just get that and drop it here. I think I lost my chat. Give me one second. There it is. Okay. All right. So this so this link will take you to the rules on our hackathon website, which is being hosted by DevPost. So please review the entirety of the rules 
before you get started so that you just know that yeah, your submission is going to comply with the requirements of this hackathon. Okay. So uh, submission period is from October 26th through December 1st. It's submission and registration. So you can register now without submitting. The good thing about dev post is you can actually save your drafts. So if you make a little bit of progress, but you want to save your work, or you don't want to wait to the last minute, you can save your draft before your final submission. And then the judging period is Monday, December 4th. That's 9 a.m. to Tuesday, December 12th. Also at 9 a.m., uh, this is all Pacific time. That's where I am located. And we're giving our judges an entire week to be able to review your submissions. And hopefully we have lots of them. Uh, winners are going to be announced on or around Thursday, Thursday, December 14th. So the reason I say on or around is that in the instance that we have a tie, we may need more time in order to allow the judges to vote on who the winner is going to be. So, so just so you were aware, on or around for the, the 14th, if everything goes as planned and there's no ties, then we will announce the winner at 11 a.m. Pacific time on December 14th. Okay. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to move on to our sponsors. I want to give a special thanks to those that sponsored this hackathon today. Uh, we have uh, TBD, Polygon ID, Trinsic, and Ontology. Ontology came on as a late sponsor, so uh, we're very happy uh, that they were able to join us as well. I will be going through their prize challenges a little bit later so that you are aware of the various prize pools that exist in this hackathon. Um, I do know that we have some people here from Polygon ID and I'd like to invite them to just introduce themselves and, in, and invite everyone here to your session. Thanks, Lemari. Yes, uh, very excited to be here. My name is Toto Bora. I'm based in uh, San Jose, Costa Rica. I work with the, uh, the folks from Polygon ID. Um, we are uh, hosting a specific challenge around, um, you know, enabling boot, Bluetooth and NFC uh, with Polygon ID uh, because we do support a variety, a ver variation of DITCOM that uh, can do that. And we think that's pretty cool. So if you want to hear more about that, uh, we would invite you to attend the session on the 8th of November, which is also linked there in the dev post and looking forward to see uh, what cool things uh, the folks here can build. Awesome. Thank you, Otto. And one other thing I will drop in here is the link to the page where you can review the sponsor prizes. So what you'll find there are the details of the sponsor challenges and also links to where you will find resources where you will be able to find tooling as well related to that. Um, also, um, I see that we have someone here from Trinsic. So I want to invite, is it Lucas? Lucas, why don't you um, introduce yourself to everyone and invite uh, invite everyone to the session by Trinsic? Yeah, my pleasure. So hi everyone, I'm Lucas. I'm a software engineer at Trinsic. Uh, if you don't know Trinsic, we are building a infrastructure for reusable identity to help you launch reusable identity products using digital wallets and verifiable credentials. So we're very excited to be here. We will have a session, I believe uh, next week about how to use uh, Trinsic SDK to launch a simple verifiable uh, credential application. And uh, also as a very brief introduction to BBS uh, schemas. So that will be really excited. Uh, I'll be on Discord if you have any questions about Trinsic SDK to use in your projects. And, you know, Thomas Love will be the one conducting the session. He also will be available to help you with any questions you may have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lucas. Yeah. And great to meet you. I put the I put the link to your session, to the Transic session in the chat. And also I'm I'm going to drop the link to the session 
uh, that Polygon ID will be doing as well. Uh, give me one second, go ahead and drop that in. So that's the link to the Polygon IDs session. Um, so I do see also we have someone who's dropped in from Ontology, who is another one of our sponsors. Um, so that's Humpty Calderon. Do you want to come up and share a little bit about uh, Ontology and invite people to actually you guys don't have a session yet, but tell people a little bit about uh, the challenge that you guys have put forward. Yeah, hopefully you can hear me and see me. Um, I logged in uh, last minute here via my phone. Yeah, no worries. I could see you and hear you just fine. Okay, perfectly. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Humpty Calderon. I've been a contributor at Ontology for a little over two years. Uh, briefly to introduce Ontology, they've been developing uh, with decentralized identity technology for going on, gosh, I feel like six years now, uh, since 2017. So someone do the math for me. Um, some of the different, uh, you know, technology that Ontology has built is OntID, uh, OScore, which is a reputation credentialing protocol that's built on top of DID, um, and a, uh, credentialing protocol called Orange Protocol as well. All, everything using DID, so really fun stuff. Um, they've also built Onto Wallet, which, uh, in my opinion, is one of the simplest ways to generate your DID. Uh, you create a wallet on the app and it associates a DID or creates a DID, excuse me, alongside with that. So um, like uh, it was mentioned earlier, uh, Ontology joined uh, as a late sponsor, uh, but we encourage you if you want to learn more about, you know, what is Ontology, the really interesting things that are being built uh, by Ontology, go to ont.io um, and ont.id. Uh, for DID specific information. Uh, I look forward to connecting with everyone here. Uh, you can find me on the Ontology Discord uh, pretty regularly, uh, which is uh, linked at the bottom of the website. But if you wanted to reach out to me directly, you can contact me on Twitter, aka X, uh, which is the Data Dude. Happy to connect with everyone here. Cheers. Awesome. It's glad we're really glad to have you here today, Humpty. And we will be setting up a session as well with you. And so look for that and then we'll have communications. We'll, we'll send out communications to all the channels so people are aware when that session is going to be. Um, and I also see that we have, we have uh, you, Adewale, Adewale uh, please correct yeah. me if that is incorrect pronunciation of your name, uh, but he's from TBD. And um, I would like to invite you also to invite people to your session that you have coming up November 8th. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Adiwale. Uh, you are close. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm a staff developer advocate at CBD. And at CBD, we are basically trying to build, uh, of course, a decentralized future, uh, combining a bunch of pillars that we have here, including decentralized identifiers, you know, um, specialized web nodes, and of course, verifiable credentials. Uh, we are doing this through the Web5 SDK, which we are also trying to invite and encourage uh, people to come use for the hackathon and then you know find out some of the amazing applications that will come out of this right uh, i have a session as well on november 8 i would like to invite you to where i'm going to be introducing like you know participants to cbd itself uh, and also what the web 5 sdk entails and empowers you to do uh, so we'll be going over most of the features especially decentralized web nodes and be hopefully be able to answer questions that you might have uh, that could aid you in building amazing applications uh, for this hackathon thank you so much Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate having you here today. And I dropped the the link to your session, which is going to be uh, next week. Let me just double check. That's 9 a.m. Pacific time. So that's November 8th. Um, so perfect. Awesome. So glad to have you here. Actually, I think that's the week, uh, the week after next. Um, okay, so we are going to be moving on here. What DIFF does. So um, we decided we wanted to give people who are new to decentralized identity and to DIFF a bit of an overview. So, you know, why are we asking you to use DIFF work items? Like, what does that mean? Um, so to give you a, a, diff, a, a bit of an overview of that, I want to invite the chair of our technical steering committee and or Kesselman up in order to give you a brief overview and answer any, any questions in that regard. So Andor, do you wanna go ahead and 
take the stage. Thank you, Amari. First of all, everybody, really great to see you all here. It's, it's very exciting. Um, Lamari, thank you for putting this together. She works crazy hours to get this to you guys and to set up everything. So um, this is very, very exciting to see everybody come together, obviously for this hackathon. So DIFF is a very interesting organization. Um, we are very active with our engineers to, um, and very focused on bringing together specifications and implementations uh, to the decentralized identity community. So what you'll see in DIFF is um, a lot of things that are kind of on the cutting edge or newer sort of specifications coming out pretty rapidly. Um, and if you, uh, we recently, as, as Lamari mentioned, uh, you'll notice that there's Veramo uh, mentioned on the bottom right corner, uh, recently in, uh, brought in uh, the Veramo stack into the DIFF organization. So that's very exciting. And uh, you should see a repo currently there um, that will allow you to play with uh, various things like verified credentials um, and Exchange Didcom, for example, a lot of the specifications that came out of Diff are um, implemented over the Veramo uh, stack. So um, we do a lot of things. Uh, we work. Uh, we build a lot of tools around DIDs, VCs, and specifications that help with that. So if you can move to the next slide, Amari. Mm -hmm. So uh, for those of you that um, are kind of getting new into the decentralized identity space, there's two really big building blocks that everything kind of revolves around. One is decentralized identifiers, DIDs, or DIDs. Um, it's a W3C recommendation as of 2022. Um, and it's a really powerful way to establish an identifier without necessarily a central authority. Um, you can read about the entire specification at their link. Um, actually, maybe it'd be helpful to send over a link uh, after this, um, as well as verify credentials, which is a data model that's also a W3C recommendation. And so a lot of the work that we do revolves around those two sort of core concepts. You'll see on the right-hand side, uh, there's an issuer, holder, verifier, and verifiable data registry. You also may have heard trust registry in the past. There's lots of ways people have defined that, but it's often called the diamond. Um, initially, the triangle, if you just remove the verifiable data registry to issue a holder and verifier, but the concept here is, is that an issuer, an institution like uh, a government or an uh, 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 academic institution would issue credential to a holder. Um, and that credential would be a verifiable credential. That's again, that specification. Um, and that holder will hold that credential um, with them and use it whenever a verifier, for example, an employer, um, wanted to learn if, you know, where that person graduated or if their identification from the government. So those are just some of the use cases that that um, sort of that verify, issuer holder verifier model um, operates under. And the data registry is sort of how we make sure that everything's all good um, and uh, maintains identifiers and schemas. And so that's a lot of the work we also do is, is around schemas. Um, and so there's some really cool work happening uh, there as well. Any questions before I move on? Next slide. So what does DIFF do? Um, we do a lot of things. Uh, we do structured collaboration. So you'll see that we have working groups with working items. Those work items, we basically get together some at different cadences, some uh, once a week, um, some twice a week, or twice once a bi-weekly, sorry, some once a month, but uh, we all get together and basically work on these specifications as a group. Uh, there will usually be chairs and um, we, you know, try to get uh, some scoped item that is part of a, a creation process, a, a working group for, um, sort of structure to, to um, be approved by the steering committee. And so we work together. It's all protected under IPR, which means that whatever you create with DIFF is open source and you don't have to worry about any, um, uh, property rights issues or anything like that. There's often implementations um, that are then created. For example, we recently also uh, brought in a DID peer two and four um, implementation in, as well as obviously the Veramo uh, stack implementations that are there. So that's really, really um, great when we actually see code. And because uh, DIFF is very engineering driven, a lot of the people that um, work within DIFF, you know, are often collaborating on GitHub and um, sort of 
committing PRs and so forth. So that's kind of how we all um, collaborate outside of uh, uh, on the actual code. And then on industry coordination, um, we do a lot of work evangelizing the diff um, working items and working groups. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other standards groups out there in, in the um, community, and we want to make sure that diff working items are brought to the forefront and people are aware of them and that they're um, using them appropriately. And so we collaborate with other organizations, W3C, OpenID, ITF, um, to make sure that the specifications we drive at diff are um, propagated through the community um, and used. So um, that's some of the stuff we do here. Any any questions? And I see there's a question in the chat actually as well. One second. Uh, Varamo stack. So some, Simon has a question. So using the Varamo stack is considered the same as using diff elements. Varamo stack implements a lot of the diff elements. Uh, you'll see as we move on to the next slide, some of the stuff it, it delivers. Um, uh, but um, the, the components that diff works on is like, modular and you'll, you'll see as we move on to the next slide actually um so can you move on to the next slide lamar so here's some of the working groups um claims and credentials uh, you might have heard if you've been around um the presentation exchange v2 that was released in february 2023 um claims and credentials actually does a few other things outside of pe but uh, we call it pe for short uh, presentation exchange is how you share a credential uh between uh, two parties um Transport agnostic, but it's a format to share that. Uh, secure data storage, TBDs here, they're working on uh, something called uh, DWNs or decentralized web nodes. I uh, also happen to chair that. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, but decentralized web nodes are one of the working items under the secure data storage uh, working group, which is about how you securely store your data um, safely and, and you know without having to worry about uh, things like encryption and so forth being a problem. So this is sort of that working group. DIDCOM, um, is Sam Kern was here. He's a, one of the leaders within DIFF. Uh, he's very, very active with this as well as a number of other people. Um, but DIDCOM is basically a way to transport um, uh, often messages uh, securely. Uh, and there's actually some trainings that you can go and see a little bit more about that. And uh, it does a lot of things under the hood been quite a bit of work, especially by the hyperledger community, to bring it to life. So did come to really important spec that is at uh, diff. Applied cryptography, a cool update here, BBS, which is uh, a cryptographic signature, um, was updated into um, IRTF, which is part of the ITF uh, meetings um, recently. So that's a very cool thing that's happening on the, uh, that you should keep an eye out for as that kind of continues to evolve with IETF. Um, identifiers and discovery. Um, I think Marcus might be here. I thought I saw him around, but he leads uh, this group and they do some great stuff with. If you've ever had to use uh, DID resolvers, um, the universal DID resolver, for example, is often discussed here, as well as a number of other really great um, uh, items related to just DIDs in general. So if you're interested in sort of the base uh, DID tools and uh, VC issuances and some of the more base uh, core uh, toolkits that you can use for um, identifiers like uh, did this is a great working group to, to get involved with. Walt Security is recently actually getting more involved with the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, that's a foundation headed by Linux uh, that is trying to um, build uh, basically open tools for developers um, for uh, wallet wallets. And so Walt Security is sort of getting more involved with them. Uh, there you go. Mark has actually just pointed in the chat um, some more information about the ID working group, if anybody's ever interested. Thai tree is also a, a really interesting, a uh, little bit more technical uh, piece around uh, sort of building uh, decentralized identifiers uh, sort of on top of blockchains. Uh, that I would check out the spec for more details because it does get a little bit, uh, it's quite technical, but very, very interesting. And it's used um, ION, for example, if you've ever used it, ION is part of a site tree. Um, and did authentication, um, we also work with OpenID um, and OIDC for VP and OIDC for V4, uh, for VC. Uh, there's a lot of terms here, but um, these are also part of did authentication working group. So uh, there's a lot to take in. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to go through like everything because there's just so much. So you're going to probably want to, if you're just getting new into this, pick one or two items that you're really interested in. 
um, maybe check out a few and then figure out, you know, what you want to dig into because it's just so there's so much detail, so much uh, uh, acronyms floating around. But if you're kind of getting started, my recommendation would be DIDs and VCs as a starting point to get involved with uh, decentralized identity. Uh, next slide. So you can see here, um, here's actually some of the descriptions of the specific things that are in, in the field today for various reasons or sort of uh, active in the community. So you can see Universal Resolver. If you ever want to resolve uh, a DID um, in a non-production use case, uh, Universal Resolver is a great way to just sort of test and play with different DID methods. Um, you'll also see here, which I did not mention, a few other things, JSON Webproof and Trust Establishment. If you're interested in things like um, uh, how you would establish a, a trust framework Trust establishment is a great place to look at. It's a specification around how to uh, establish that somebody's uh, authorized to basically um, communicate about a certain topic. So again, there's a little bit of nuances here, but um, SciTree we talked about a little bit, Didcom we talked about a little bit, Presentation Exchange um, as well we talked about a little bit. So we, uh, the other ones I think we've, we've talked about in some degree, but um, does anybody have any questions about a specific work item or sort of um, item on this this uh, uh, this slide right here that I'm happy to to maybe address in more detail while we have a little bit of time. Sid asked, "Will well, the slides be shared?" Yeah, yeah. go ahead, sorry, Lemery. The slides. So I'm sharing here uh, a slide deck, which so what Andor is going through. Some of these slides are based on a presentation that our executive director gave to the W3C and I'm sharing that slide. So every single link that you see here, you'll find there um, in this slide deck. Uh, so you can go through, but I'll also make this slide deck available as well because it does also highlight some of the important rules. Um, and I see that Claire's hand is up. Claire. And Claire is yeah. our executive director here at DIFF. And so maybe while she asked her question, she can also introduce herself as well. Sure, thank you, Lamari, and welcome everyone. I'm coming to you from my home in Austin, Texas, and I see people from all over the world in Costa Rica, Norway, as Lamari was mentioning earlier, Japan, Brazil, Seattle, Nigeria, India, and, and that's very reflective of DIFF. We are a truly global organization. And thank you, Andor, for that introduction and overview of DIFF. So I get this question a lot, and maybe you can help answer it, because I see we have a, a diverse audience. For a new person, if I'm new to all things at DIFF, if I'm new to decentralized identity, and I'm just seeing that you know the specifications for DIDs, decentralized identifiers, and verifiable credentials, where is a good place for me to start? If I'm a brand new person, where should I start? That's a, it's a really good question. I think, and this is related actually, somebody just asked the question around, uh, for example, wanting to do a healthcare uh, data problem. Um, I think the best way to do this is probably, uh, so I'm happy to, and I think Diff is happy to guide, um, if you have a specific thing that you're interested in in terms of use case, probably the best way would be to just ask a diff member and I'm happy to be around and answer any questions. What's something I should look into because there's just such a wealth of information. It is still hard to, to navigate that entire uh, ecosystem. So I think, for example, in this question, a decentralized healthcare data, um, the suggestion I would probably have is to look at either DIDCOM or DWNs as a way. And it really depends on how you'd want to, if you want to focus on the storage aspect or if you wanted to focus on more just uh, communicating uh, the, the data over messaging. Um, so those, uh, I think those are two, two ways to handle it. But I, I would say um, the other thing is the website is, is really helpful. Read an overview. Start with looking at the website. There's um, some good information about abstracts, about what each of these projects are and what they do. Um, and so it is a lot, though. So please lean on the community to sort of navigate around um, when you're feeling a little bit like there's too much information. And I think uh, we've actually been discussing within DIFF making ourselves more available to you all so that when you have questions, we get uh, as fast a response as possible to answer those questions and help you navigate 
the amount of information that's available. And Thank also, you. I'll emphasize um, that we will be having presentations on Veramo and how DIDCOM can be used with Veramo, and also a presentation on uh, Web Web Five. So those. So if you want to talk more about implementation, how you can implement DIDCOM, how you can implement DWNs, then those are really good sessions that you won't want to miss. And I dropped in the chat our our full page with all the educational sessions that are happening over the, the next coming weeks so that you can register for whichever ones look like they're going to be relevant to you. Yeah, and again, I will just reiterate, you're not alone here. So if you do have any questions or if you feel like you need some help, please reach out to the community, reach out to the Discord, reach out to whatever channels you need, and we'll make sure that we connect you with the right people. Um, not everybody will have all the answers for every single item that you see here. Um, and so often the answer is, is to connect with somebody else uh, that is intimately familiar with a particular work item or a particular uh, specification that can maybe help you if you have a very specific question. Yeah, and also ask questions in Discord. So that's a great place for people to be able to see, other people to be able to see what questions you asked because chances are other people have the same question. So I am inviting DIFF members, especially ones that have been around the community for years and are very knowledgeable to come and also share their knowledge in the Discord server as well. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? I think that I think that was the last slide for this section of the presentation. So I don't see any other questions on this front. Um, and I already dropped this in the chat, but I just wanted people to have that slide deck in order to uh, follow up with all of the links that were presented in the previous slide. Um, so you'll find that in the chat. Okay, thank you so much, Andor. Really appreciate that overview. And, um, and Andor is gonna be around for the rest of the session. So if further questions do come up that are on the very technical, low level technical side, then Andor can help guide you, put you, guide you in the right direction and, and help you out with those questions as well. Okay. All right, so we are going to be moving on now to hackathon rules, what everyone has been waiting for. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, this is only going to be a pretty small section. I'm going to be going through who can and cannot submit, what you are submitting, what, what are the uh, parameters, the judging cr criteria, but there's actually more in the rules that I won't be going through. So please make sure to review those. Um, the first aspect of the rules I'm go going to review is who can submit. So in this hackathon, individuals, teams, organizations of all sorts, including corporations, startups, they can submit. So maybe, lots of people registered and then they came together as a team later, that's fine. How you're going to designate one person in your group to actually do the submission. Um, but all of those categories can join this hackathon. The next question I'll go move on to um, next topic is who the hackathon is not open to. This is section three in the rules, which are on our website. So I'm going to go ahead and um, drop that. I think I dropped it before. I'll just drop it again um, in case anybody missed it. But the, the hackathon rules in section three um, is, unfortunately, is uh, the hackathon is not open to residents of countries, states, or provinces where uh, U.S. or local law prohibits receiving a prize in a hackathon. And of course, as we know, things are subject to change in various parts of the world. So make sure that you know that you're in compliance with your local laws. If you want to read more about that, go to section three. Also, if you are an employee a, of a sponsor or a judge or a relative 
of a sponsor or a judge that unfortunately you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to enter this hackathon um, this time around. Might be different next time uh, if you know that person's not sponsoring or judging, uh, but this time around you wouldn't be able to compete. Okay, so what I'm going to start out with is doing a overview of the diff prize pool challenge and you'll find all of this in section four of the rules. And our challenge is to build an app using at least one diff work item. The reason we wanted to create something so open is because we didn't want to restrict what people might be able to do and what work items they might want to take on. Um, and so these are examples of work items that are being worked on at diff, at diff, such as decentralized web nodes. So you might have heard Andor say DWN, that stands for decentralized web nodes. Uh, DIDCOM or did communication. Uh, DIDS, um, I know I'm using lots of acronyms, but just in assuming that there might be someone here coming into uh, DI for the first time, DIDS are decentralized identifiers. We have presentation exchange, did lint, BBS signature scheme, trust establishment, and the universal resolver as the, the main um, items that we are asking people to work with. And so you might be asking, okay, I don't, I'm not sure how to get started. Um, you know, these are specifications. How do I take this and build with it? and create a submission. Well, that's why we're holding all of these educational sessions over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be starting with an intro to decentralized identity with Brian Richter, who is a very active member of the DIFF community who offered to uh, do an overview. And he also is a good resource if you want some additional tools beyond what we have on our resources page. Um, we're going to have DIDS, DID Resolution, and the Universal Resolver with Marcus um, on November 1st. An introduction to the Veramo JavaScript framework with Mercea uh, Nistor, which is November 2nd. Uh, Trinsic and their SDK and the BBS signature scheme. Uh, we'll have TBD on Web5 and Polygon ID and an intro to DIDCOM uh, with Veramo. So all of those sessions are coming up over the next couple of weeks. So make sure to register on the Hackathon website for the individual sessions that you are interested in attending. What must a submission include? So you'll find uh, when you get to the point of submission, you will find a form on DevPost these are the things that you're going to have to provide in the in that form. So you're going to need to provide a URL URL to a public code repository. To be eligible for the main diff prize pool, the code must be open source. So I emphasize this: our main diff, diff prize pool is all open source. So our sponsor prize pools, we did not require them to make them open source, but you'll have to review each one of the challenges uh, one by one um, in order to determine if it's something that you want to create open source for so that you can submit both for that challenge and for the diff prize challenge because you can submit the same make the same submission to more than one challenge um, so basically make, make sure that you're reviewing the rules for the specific challenge that you want to submit to it's optional, but you can provide a URL to a functional demo app. Um, include a brief text description that explains the features and functionality and also diff work items used. Uh, so if you did, uh, for instance, use TBD's Web5 that uses decentralized web nodes, you wanna make sure that you mention that. And a three minute explainer or demo. So I know that's not a lot of time, but you don't have to go through every single thing because judges are gonna get an idea of what you created based on a variety of sources. Um, and judges may get very deep or not into the submission. So make sure that it's extremely brief, 
this is what it does. This is what it, it's meant to do uh, so that judges get an idea of your submission pretty quickly. Also, um, make sure that your video shows footage that shows the project functioning on a device for which it was built. Um, and the video needs to be made public somewhere. So examples are YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook video, Yuku, whatever, um, wherever it makes sense for you to make it public. And make sure there's no third party trademarks, copyrighted music or anything like that in, in those videos. Are there any questions so far? Hi, Lamari. Yeah. I had um I had a question regarding this. Um, everything that you spoke about and we spoke about since the opening session is really clear. Uh, when you talk about each one wanting to take up a specific task or an item to work on, is there a possibility that they can group with others who are here and work on it as a team or everyone has to work on it individually? No, everyone can team up if they like. And I encourage teams, um, they can do either. They can work individually or team up. And yeah. there is a channel in Discord where you can find teams. There's there's even a feature in Dev Post as well to find teams. So okay. so plenty of ways to find teams. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you. Is, sure. is it uh, okay to be part of mo uh, more than one team? And also, is it okay to have a, not a team to be a sim single contributor? As per the rules, you can you can be more a uh, part of more than one team. And also, if you wanted to, for instance, for instance, if you wanted to make your own contribution, but then you also had a team you wanted to work with as per, as per the rules, that is allowed. Great, thank you. So I hope that answers the question. Sure. Yeah, it does. And it looks like somebody, uh, oh, Claire, you put a section, you uh, pasted a section there. Thank you for that. Um, so, and then I think I see another question. Um, oh, hey, Courtney, it's good to see you here. Um, so you're asking on behalf of uh, one of your team members. So in the submission, is there a type of open source license uh, the repository must have? So I would, so there's a section in, um, the uh, the rules that actually goes uh, well in depth into that. But Andor, did you have something that you wanted to add? I know I saw you put your, your camera on. Oh, no, I was just gonna say most of the, I, I don't know actually, Alamari, if there's restriction on, on other licensing for this hackathon, but generally we use Apache 2 um, within diff. So uh, just as a guiding principle, we just generally use Apache 2 as an open source license, if that's uh, at all helpful. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so important to know, multiple submissions are allowed if each submission is unique and substantially different from each of the other submissions. So this uh, speaks to the person who spoke before and asked the question, can I be part of more than one team? Um, so, you know, it's fine if, say, as an individual, you want to submit more than one submission or as a team, just make sure that the submissions are substantially different from one another. And in parentheses, I put sole discretion of sponsor because we're going to look at that. And if we do see, you know, actually, that's not very different, um, that is going to be at the discre discretion of the hackathon organizers. Uh, submissions must be the original work of the submitter, uh, solely owned by the submitter and not violate any IP rights of any other person or entity. So I think that's very clear. Um, and it may be made av uh, available to the public by way of a website uh, or online store, but it's not required to do so. And I'm, I'll go through some details about how we're submitting based on how it's made available. Um, 
so I think we answered this question, but this question came up and some somebody asked, can I submit without a diff work item? And for the main diff prize pool, the main $10,000 prize pool, uh, you cannot submit without a diff work item, which leads me to the next commonly asked questions is using dids and VCs enough. You, you will have to use more than dids and VCs because DIDs and VCs actually didn't originate at DIFF. They came out of working groups at the W3C. So at DIFF, we do consider them very important building blocks in our ecosystem. And people who are members at DIFF also were in those working groups. However, it's they are not DIFF work items. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. DIDs and VCs are not diff work items. So make sure that listing that we put up uh, earlier, didcom, um, uh, decentralized web nodes, for example, um, trust establishment, all those other BBS, BBS signature scheme, make sure that that is in some way included in your submission. Is there a preferred framework to use? So we are encouraging people to use Veramo. Um, Veramo just got donated to Diff. We have very close relationships with them. And we also um, will have two sessions on Veramo. So if you're not sure how to get started, that's gonna be a good place because you will have a lot of support from that community. So uh, that's, uh, that's something I'll add to that question. Um, now moving on, uh, so projects on smartphones, tablets, or desktops. So uh, just a few important things that you have to make the project available using one of three methods. So for an Android, upload an a APK file or provide a link for downloading the project in the, in the testing instructions field. And on iOS, make sure you provide a link on the submission form to the app in the iTunes app store, or if it's charging a fee, make sure to provide a promo code. Or if your, if your project is not publicly available on the iTunes app store, you have to send a test build uh, to testing at devpost.com before the end of the hackathon uh, period. And also uh, test flight, make sure you're, you're testing uh, using test flight. There, the link is there in the uh in the slide um let me see if i have i don't have it handy but it's in the rules section if you go to the rules section uh section four then you will find that direct link to test flight you'll enter the administrator's email address to share a build for testing and the administrator's test flight account is decentralized.identity at gmail.com but don't worry this is on section four so if you don't get all of this go back to section four, and this is also not until you submit. So so don't worry too much about this part right now, um, as long as you get a submission in that is compliant uh, with the rules, which is open source for the main prize pool or compliant with the sponsor prize requirements, then you'll be okay. Okay, and then so I have a couple more questions that have come in. Let's see. Is there a verifiable data network to use? And or is that something that you can speak to? Yeah, um, so I think we clarified it as the, uh, the question was around the blockchain and some of the working items do use the blockchain um, within diff, but a lot of them are blockchain agnostic. Um, for example, if you look at PE or a lot of the, um, not just PE, like most of them actually, um, they don't require by necessity a blockchain. And so it's really up to you um, how you'd like to implement it. So in, in your um, uh, trust diamond diagram, mm -hmm. you had yeah. the piece at the bottom. What, what do you refer to that as? The verifiable data registry. You, you may have heard data it registry, also as a trust yeah. registry. Yeah. So that can be implemented in a number of ways. Um, it's not... Uh, there's no strict requirements on how, how you decide to implement it. Um, and there's, there's lots of ways to, to do it depending on what your needs are. Um, but I'm happy to, um, if you have any like specific questions, maybe after on, on discord, I'm happy to, to answer them 
around like, depending on the use case, what might make sense to get you up and running quickly, quicker for the hackathon. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Andor. Um, and let me see if there were any other. Um, and so those came from Dave. So Dave, did that answer all your questions? I, it looks like you had more than one question. Um, I think I need uh, further discussion. I'll, I'll reach out to Andor on uh, uh, Discord. Perfect. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so I'll move on. Um, and, um, and I think I, so I missed the last bit here is that if you are submitting a web, um, via web or a mobile web, provide a link for accessing your project on the testing instructions field in the submission form. Okay. So section four for all that. Intellectual property. So something I, I have to make sure to mention is that submissions, of course, have to be the original work of you or your team. Um, you cannot violate IP rights or other rights, copyright, et cetera. And someone did ask me, can I enter a no code submission? And so you cannot submit without any of the technical work being done. However, you can contract a third party for technical assistance to create a submission. However, it has to be your original idea based on your own creativity. That person would basically just be implementing your idea. So I, I hope that person's on this call. I'm not sure if they are. Okay, so... Uh, Hackathon challenges. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the various challenges that we do have for this hackathon, I'm starting with TVD's Web 5 Challenge, which is 5K in prizes. And the challenge is to build a decentralized app using web5.js. And they're particularly interested in the use of decentralized web nodes. So you'll see the submission requirements for that challenge below. And somebody also, um, give me one second here. I think I have another question. Was that from Andor? Okay, no, that was something. Uh, okay, yeah, that was so, um, so, um, so that is the TBD Web 5 challenge. Uh, we also have Polygon IDs challenge, which is uh, 2000 in prizes. Uh, build an application that uh, communicates via IDEN3COM. If the communication is done over NFC or Bluetooth, it will have an additional score. Um, and you'll find all the resources. So on our, on our sponsor prize challenge page, you'll find all the details there along with the resources for that challenge. Trinsic IDs challenge is 2.5 thousand in prizes. The challenge is to build an integration with a valuable data source that gives user control of their data in the form of a VC. So um, I'm including a couple of your examples. They actually have more examples that you'll find on the sp uh, sponsor prize poll page, uh, but they it's pretty cool. Um, I actually like the example they have on the bottom where they say, instead of Spotify raps telling you you're in the top 1% of listeners, is there a way you can actually take your data into a VC to present, to, to prove that to the artist. Well, that's a really fun use case. So um, I just wanted to highlight that. So ontology, 1.5 thousand in prizes and their challenge is to build a web three app using ONT ID. And if the ONT idea can be applied in an app that solves a real world privacy and data protection problem, it will, score higher. So we heard a few words from Humpty earlier. Um, so all the details for ontologies, prize, sponsor prize, and also resources you're going to be able to find on that same uh, sponsor uh, prize pool page. I'm going to drop that one more time here in the chat so that people have access to it because that's going to get you to what the prize challenges are from our sponsors. It's also going to get you to what the links are so that you can come up to speed, educational resources, tooling, all of that will be there through that page. Okay, so that's it for sponsors. So any questions? There is so one I'm... in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. 
so this is so I'm seeing the one from Ed Edward Curran. If you submit to a sponsor challenge, are you also eligible for the main diff prize? So if what you are submitting to the sponsor challenge meets the requirements of the diff prize as well, then you can submit it. So um the so all of the sponsors are making open source tools available. Um, Trinsic is also making their platform available. Trinsic um, platform, it's not open source, but you're not required to use Trinsic platform for their particular prize challenge as well. So, so the answer is yes, if it meets the requirements of being open source. So I hope that answers your question. And it includes a diff work item. Of course, the diff work item is, is, is key. Okay, perfect. Oh, and Otto has a very good answer there about Polygon ID that they use Iden3Com, which is also a variant of Didcom. So, uh, so that's also a, a good um, tool. Polygon ID's tools will also be good for entering into the main diff prize pool challenge as well. Judging criteria. So this is how submissions are going to be judged. So I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. So if you have any questions on any one of them, let me know. Uh, but number one, functionality, how well the app performs and fulfills its intended purpose. And just so you know, in the instance that there is a tie, if there is a tie between two submissions, then we're going to come back to this very first judging criteria and whoever scores higher in this particular criteria will be the winner. Um, if there's a tie in functionality, then we go on to feasibility. So that's how tiebreakers are gonna work based on the judging criteria. Uh, so two, feasibility, can this app be feasibly implemented and used in the real world? Scalability, could it scale for wide adoption? Technical complexity, the level of technical expertise and complex complexity demonstrated in the implementation. Um, how well the team made use of diff work items were diff work items prominently used in the application. Um, so one note is that all of the um, the main diff prize poll and the sponsored prize polls, they're all going to have the same judging criteria, but this particular question for the sponsor prize polls, we're leaving it up to uh, the sponsors how they how, how much they want to weight that. Uh, so creativity and innovation, how original is, is the idea? Does the submission use the technology in a unique way not seen before? User experience, intuitiveness, ease of use, and overall user friendliness. And presentation, how, the, how well the team presented their work. So uh, presentation, keep in mind that you want to make, one of the reasons that it's important to make sure that there's a good presentation is that our judges might be going through a lot of submissions and you want to make that easy for them. So that could be clear documentation. Just make sure if you're writing something that you put some thought into how you're, you're presenting things uh, for your written documentation, a neat and tidy code, you know, those things are going to be extremely helpful in the judging process and will increase your chances of scoring higher. So I do want to very much emphasize that. So are there any questions on the judging criteria? And thank you, Toby, for adding the Discord link as well. I, I, I was added earlier, but we have so many questions coming through. It's always glad to, it's always good to repost. Okay, so I'm watching, so I'm, I'm aware of the time. I know that um, we had booked for the hour, but we don't have very much left. So let, let's get through uh, the rest here. Okay, um, so how potential winners will be selected? So very simple, it's based on submissions that earn the highest overall scores based on the judging criteria. So judges will have a one through five for every single criteria, they will go through your entire submission, all that you provide them for resources on your submission, 
and then they will judge for in every category in that way. So that's how the the judging is going to uh, to happen. So pretty much that's all I have. If you have any other questions, please email us at hackathon at identity.foundation. I also want to emphasize, uh, please go through the entirety of the rules since I was not able to cover all of the rules today. Uh, but with that, uh, thank you guys so much for coming. And But before we hop off, are there any other questions that anybody has about anything that we went through today? So I'm not seeing anything in the chat. While you're thinking, what I'm going to drop in is a presentation tomorrow. So Brian Richter is going to be joining us tomorrow for an intro to decentralized identity. So if anyone's coming brand new, fresh to decentralized identity and you want an overview, make sure to join us tomorrow. I'm going to be dropping that in the chat here. Um, so that we can get you up to speed and then make sure to join us also next week for those sessions as well. So I don't see any other questions coming through. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. It was really nice to see all of you. I look forward to seeing you in the Discord and I look forward to seeing your submissions. We do want to see you through to the finish line. So always reach out if you need any help. We're happy to, to uh, we're happy to assist you. And I have a team of community members who are ready and standing by to help. So thank you once again, and have a, a wonderful rest of your Thursday or wherever you are in the world. It might be Friday and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Libmari. Thank you. Thanks, Libmari, great job. Thank you, Libmari, meet you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a great Good day. Good to see you. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks, Lemurie. Thank you.